Ricardo Liborio, uh, after more than a decade, is fighting, is, is coming back to competition. What made you decide to come back to fighting? Well, um, this, to make a, a long story short, you know, I, I spent some time training with Sheikh Tahno. Mm -hmm. This was like 15 days there training with him. It was an honor to train with a guy who really actually built up the sport that we're so, so big of a fan, you know. He, he established the sport of no gi grappling and he really made it happen. And, and what he's been doing in UAE also, it's just, you know, he's an idol. So it was an honor to work out with him, just to, to be invited to do this. You know, after that, one week after that, I, I, I came back to the United States and Guy Neves called me, Laborio, you know, do you want to compete? You know, I just want to let you know, Mario Sperry already accepted the, the challenge, you know, there's this super match with, between you guys, guys in the same age, do you want her to do it? And, man, it was, you know, there were so, so many things, you know, that, that I gained doing this. You know, there's so many good reasons for me to do this. I, I accept it right away. But just the quality of life, you know, the, the training with my guys, losing weight, getting a proper diet, you know, do things that feel the passion of the competition again. Um, Beyond anything else, I have a daughter, for, for people who don't, don't know, so she's, village, you know, she's visually impaired and this is, was a great motivation for me to show her how disciplined they have to be in life, you know, for anything, you know, winning or losing and, you know, the, you know, the, the major point on all this is, is, is to never quit, man, you just keep going and to punch the clock and, and live day by day and, and, and it get the goods, you know, it got the goods out of the discipline. And I, I'm doing this for her, I'm doing this for, for love of the sport, I'm doing this for so many other reasons, man. I'm doing this for Carlson Gracie too, I'm, I'm, I'm celebrating, I'm, I'm doing this for, for happiness, you know, it's, man, I'm so happy to be here. What I can say, man, I'm so happy to be here right now and in and, and, and the quality of life that I have here right now, man. No, I have absolutely nothing to lose, man. I just gained nothing, you know, nothing to lose. Barry is a former teammate. Uh, was there a moment when you think, uh, well, I, I, I would like to come back but not face him? If he was the other person, of course, he would have been better, you know. I have no problems against Barry at all. At all, but he's a champion, you know, and he's a champion. He's only one champion. That's another reason why, you know. Well, you know, we, we have so many guys in the 107-pound division in, in UFC. We have the champion, Robbie Lawler, he, from there so on, the Tyron, Tyron Woodley, who's number three. You know, from there, he goes from Hector Lombard and Pitbull, and it's, you know, so Kobe comes, so many. Their list is so many. What am I going to do? What, what can I tell those guys? Don't fight, don't compete, don't try to be the best in the world. And one of the ways to prove that is me competing against an ex-teammate, you know. I have a lot of respect for him, a lot of respect for him as a person, a lot of respect for him as a, as a competitor. It's going to be so, such a harder fight, I know that, you know, I'm, I'm ready for it. But it's, it's, there's one champion, man, I wanted that too, you know, so. You are always training with the UFC fighters in the gym, but uh, how was you? Were, were you already in shape when you got a call and you think, man, I gotta be ready in shape for this? For the first oh, match. I wasn't in shape at all, at all. It took me 11 months to try to get in shape. Three of the first months, man, it was just doing therapy, man. I really do therapy, you know, I have some really bad problems, you know, real bad ones. And I did a lot of therapy and I do a lot of, you know, physical conditioning and to get to the stage of training with my guys. And it's still 50 years old, you know, you, you train with 25 year old kids, man, it's, it's, it's hard. And who really, really trains, you're going to get injured, you're going to get hurt and you got to take care of the injuries once you're training and all this, all this is fascinating, man. This is all comes back, you know. And, and man, I, I love it, man. I'm enjoying it so much, you know? Having guys in your, in your gym that, are, that are, are also competing here, like Jeff Monson and uh, Ayrton Lombard, did that make, make it easier for you to, to, to so you'll know you, you, you have a, 
more more fighters in your gym that are training for the same dates that you are going to to compete here? Yes, of course. No, we have the same agenda. Like Hector is training with me. Hector trained with me a lot, especially Hector. Jeff has a completely different schedule. You know, fighting here and there every week. You look at uh, Jeff; he has something going on. Um, I don't know even if he if he's going to compete. Jeff had some visa problems. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but we had Tammy. You know, I trained with Vargas Rocha also. It helped me a lot in my camp. There's so many people, man. You know, I train, I train so many people there. Mo Luol, man, helped me so much for this camp. Steve Mako, you know, Tiago Pitbull Alves, you know, all my kids. I have kids that I trained since I was 13 years old. Kids flying from, from, from Norway, you know, to be here with me. You know, my kids there at the gym. I, that's a good thing about having a, a team, you know. I have so many people behind it, you know. And, and, and they're behind me, it doesn't matter what. And like I said, man, I, I'm just so happy, so lucky to be here. And the, the best part of training at ATT that you have, a, you always have uh, high level fighters uh, with fighters book, fights books, like uh, Robbie Lawler has a fight coming up in December, uh, Thiago Alves just signed his next fight. Uh, so how do you see the, the, the upcoming months of ATT and MMA in the, in the UFC? You have a, uh, Another title, title defense for Lawler, Thiago Alves is headlining a UFC card in you know, a big fight against Benson Henderson. Yeah, um, Robbie's fighting, right, in, in, in Australia, but besides that, uh, I think we have a tough fight coming up here. I think it's Joel and Jacare is a tough, tough fight. This is going to show a lot, and, you know, I believe a lot in Joel. Um, can't forget Amanda Nunes is there. She's a contender, right? you know, also. There are, there are so many people here. Oh, Tyrone Woodley, like it or not, Tyrone Woodley passing Johnny Hendricks, you know, there's something there. You know, this is going to be a problem. I told those guys already, right, I'm just, man, I'm going to take vacation. I'm going to watch this from, a, from a, a sports bar somewhere. Nobody can really know exactly who I am, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting involved with that. But there are so many people, you know. Bigfoot, big Bigfoot, man. Bigfoot and Mark Hunt. Look at this. This too, but man, I absolutely love Mark Hunt. Bigfoot is our guy, you know. This is two of our American top team guys. You like it or not, you know. Mark Hunt trained with us, you know. But before, besides that, I have a great connection with Mark. Great connection. His coach there, Steve Oliver, is actually trains with me, and he is American top team New Zealand. So it's 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 all good. It's all business. It's all it, it's all. It's all good, man. It's all good. In the women's division, Amanda Nunes was, was in the conversation we're getting at, uh, at title shot. Were you, were you surprised that when first they went with uh, Misha Tate and then decided to book uh, Rousey against uh, Holly Holm? Were you, were you surprised when they uh, passed uh, Amanda Nunes on this? No, I think Amanda just, you know, is picking up right now. I think the whole work with Amanda, Amanda's working a lot with, with, with some of the guys, especially Mike Brown, man. I think a really perfect fit for her, you know, and, and Roger Crawl would, would, would match up with her striking. But Misha Tate, again, it would not make sense that much, you know. Okay, it will sell pay-per-view. It will sell pay-per-view because of Ronda Rousey will sell anything, you know, but I don't know how many people want to watch this again, you know. And so it's, it's, it's a good fit, I believe, you know. I, I don't really decide or anything like that. But, you know, when, when the time comes for Amanda, Amanda's going to be ready. And who's next for her? There were some talks of, of her fighting Misha Tate. Uh, is there any, any, anything conversation right now for her next fight? Um, well, I'm, I'm, I have been here for at least two weeks, you know. And, or, or more, so far more. So I'm not really connected to what's going on there. You know, I watch her fights from the TV, but um, I don't know exactly the negotiations, you know, what's going on there. You know, you should be talking to Lambert. Lambert is here. He came over to see, watch my fight. He, he got the more the insights than me. But yeah, well, we're, I think we have a lot of people in, in a way to, for, for tight contention, and we're going to do the best to, to try to collect all the belts. Or are you, are you UFC belts coming to ATT now? I hope so. Um, there's so many, man. Uh, there's, there's so many chances, you know. The thing is hard work. The thing is hard work, never quit, believe all the times, and punch the clock. And that's what I believe. I believe in hard work, you know. And a divine intervention because you have to have your percentage of luck there. But whatever luck that you have, it, 
you got to put the time into it, man. You got to work hard, and and we do we do this there, man. We do that, you know. We have the coaches, we have the the staff, we have the training partners, we have everything. It's just a matter of work. Keep working, and we get there.